Welcome, welcome, awesome adventurers of the mind. You're listening to Atomic Booger. Atomic Booger. That's right. The podcast where we explore amazing facts about the world and everything happening around us. I'm your super smart, totally nerdy host, Adam. And I'm your not-so-tiny, fire-breathing co-host, Booger, the most magnificent dragon of all. (laughs) But don't worry, my roars are mostly for dramatic effect, not for, you know, accidental toast. That's right, Booger. And today, we're diving headfirst, wink-wink, into the squishy, wrinkly, brilliant, absolutely incredible organ that makes you, well, you. Ooh, is it the heart? Hearts are cool. They pump things. Even cooler, Booger. Livers? Gallbladders? Ooh, please tell me it is the spinal cord. Close, Booger. We're talking about the most important organ of all. The brain. The brain? You mean that (laughs) pinky gray lump inside your skull? (laughs) What's so cool about that? (laughs) Oh, Booger, my friend. You're about to have your scales blown off. Um, ouch. This is Atomic Booger! Your brain is like the ultimate supercomputer, but even better. It's the boss of your entire body. Reporting for duty, ma'am. It controls everything you do, from thinking and feeling to dancing and even things you don't even notice, like breathing and your heart rate. Whoa, so my brain tells my fiery breath to not burn down the studio. (laughs) That is cool. Exactly. And it's always working, even when you're asleep, controlling your dreams and sorting through all the stuff you learned that day. So, no vacation days? Nope. Let's start with some basic facts. Did you know an adult human brain weighs about three pounds? That's like a small carton of milk, and it's about 75% water. So staying hydrated is super important for it to work properly. Three pounds? That's lighter than one of my claws. But it's mostly water? Does that mean it's squishy? The brain is often described as having the texture of a firm jelly. What flavor? I don't know. Brain flavored? Maybe. Makes sense. (laughs) But never mind that, Booger. And get this, Booger. 60% of the human brain is made of fat, making it the fattiest organ in your body. These healthy fats are crucial for your brain's performance. So, if I eat more healthy fats, like delicious crunchy nuts, my brain will work better? You got it. Unless you're allergic to nuts. Now, When you were a baby, your brain weighed less than a pound. But in your first year of life, your brain triples in size. Triples? Three times as big. And it keeps growing until you're about 25 years old before it's fully developed. 25? So, my dragon brain is still growing too? That explains so much. Let's talk about how this amazing organ does all its magic. Your brain has about 100 billion tiny cells called neurons. A hundred billion. That means if you had a pile of not just 10 or 100, but you had a pile of a thousand tiny cells, and then you took that pile of a thousand tiny cells and then had a thousand of those piles and made a whole new big giant pile. Wow, that's a really, really big pile. But wait, there's more. Then, if you had a thousand of that big giant pile for an even more huge pile, it still wouldn't be enough to equal 100 billion tiny cells. Whoa! Well, all those tiny cells are tiny messengers, or the gray matter that processes information. They connect to other neurons through trillions of connections called synapses. Experts even call this a neuron forest. A neuron forest. (laughs) Like a magical thinking jungle inside your head. (laughs) Precisely. And these neurons are super fast. Information can travel between them at speeds up to an impressive 350 miles per hour. That's faster than most race cars. Faster than a jet plane when it takes off into the air. So when I see a shiny coin, it's my brain that tells my claw to grab it super fast? Yep. 
And get this, booger. When you're awake, your brain generates about 12 to 25 watts of electricity. That's enough energy to illuminate a light bulb. So those cartoon light bulbs popping up when someone has an idea? That kind of makes sense to me. I knew it. <laughs> My brain is a hidden power plant. <laughs> The brain has different parts, each with special jobs. The cerebrum is the biggest part, taking up about 85% of your brain's weight. 85%? How much is that? Out of every 10 parts of your brain, about 8 of them are the cerebrum. Wow! It's the thinking part, and it controls your voluntary muscles. Like when you move your body on purpose, like when you decide to walk or dance. It's also where your memory lives and where you do your reasoning. Reasoning means the process of thinking about something in order to make a decision. So, my cerebrum helps me remember where I hit my treasure? <laughs> yes. Then there's the cerebellum at the back, which helps you with balance, movement, and coordination. I think sometimes my cerebellum doesn't work so well. I'm wobbly and fly into things. Sometimes you just don't pay attention, booger. Sorry. Did you say something, Adam? Ah, and the brain stem connected to your spinal cord controls all the automatic stuff you don't think about, like breathing and your heartbeat. My brain stem is like my internal autopilot. <laughs> your brain also has two hemispheres, or two halves. The left side is more for analytical thoughts, like deciding things like math and logic, and the right side is for creative thoughts, like music and art. And here's a cool crisscross fact. Your right hemisphere controls the left side of your body and your left hemisphere controls the right side. That is weird. Who made that decision? Booger, have you ever tried something new? And it felt super hard at first, but then it got easier? Oh, totally. Like when I first learned to fly backwards while juggling flaming marshmallows. It was messy. <laughs> well... Your brain was on an adventure then. It's story time! Let me tell you a story about a little brain named Blinky. Oh, I love that name. Blinky. <laughs> Blinky was a brand new brain, excited about all the things it would learn. It belonged to a human, a young child named Leo. And Leo wanted to learn to ride a bicycle. At first, it was a disaster. Leo wobbled, fell, and got frustrated. Blinky was working overtime, sending messages everywhere. Balance this way, pedal that way, steer straight, don't fall. It felt like a million tiny lights blinking frantically inside Blinky. The neurons were trying to connect, but the pathways were weak and wobbly, just like Leo on his bike. Poor Blinky. <laughs> poor Leo. And poor Leo. <laughs> But Leo didn't give up, and neither did Blinky. Every day, Leo practiced, and with each practice, Blinky sent those bike-riding messages along the same neuron paths again and again. Slowly, something amazing happened. Those pathways started to get stronger and faster. It was like Blinky was building a superhighway just for bike-riding. New connections formed, making the old ones more efficient. So Blinky was getting stronger with practice, too. <laughs> exactly. Blinky was undergoing something called neurogenesis. Neurogeliness? No, booger. Neurogenesis. That means generating or producing new neurons and increasing its brain volume, how big it is, which helps with memory and thinking. Soon, Leo could ride his bike without even thinking about it. His feet pedaled, his hands steered, and his body balanced almost magically. Blinky had stored all that information, allowing Leo to ride smoothly. So every time we learn something new, our brain literally changes its structure? That's like magic. It's better than magic, Booger. It's nature. And it is science. And it shows that your brain is always ready for new adventures and challenges, getting stronger and smarter with every new thing you try. Adam, I think my brain's ready for some jokes now. 
<laughs> I've been thinking really hard. <laughs> Perfect timing, Booger. I've got a few brainy ones. What do you call a brain that thinks it's a comedian? Hmm, a, a, a pundit? A no-brainer. <laughs> okay, my turn. <laughs> Why did the neuron call an electrician? <laughs> oh, I know this one. Because it felt wired. You got it. All right, a riddle for you, Adam. I am the command center, yet I have no voice. I control your thoughts, but I have no choice. What am I? That's an easy one, Booger. You're the brain. Nailed it. Here's a quick one. What's a brain's favorite type of music? Let me think. Something with a good beat? Anything with a good mind beat. Okay, okay. You're on a roll. What continues to work even after it is fired? What? A neuron? Amazingly bad. <laughs> or just amazing. <laughs> Speaking of amazing, let's clear up a myth right now. You might have heard that humans only use 10% of their brain. I heard that too. <laughs> so I only use 10% of my dragon brain? That's totally untrue, Booger. You actually use all of your brain, even when you're sleeping. Neurologists confirm your brain is always active. While not all regions are firing at the same moment, most are active over a 24-hour period. Phew, my brain is working hard all the time. It is. And here's another cool one. Your brain's storage capacity is considered virtually unlimited. Research suggests it could add up to one quadrillion, that's 1,000 trillion connections. That's more thoughts than stars in my dragon galaxy. Almost. Speaking of thoughts, your brain produces an estimated 70,000 thoughts on an average day. But guess what? About 95% of those are the same repetitive thoughts as the day before. And 80% are negative. So maybe we should try to think more positively. I always think about treasure, so that's positive for me. <laughs> Good strategy, Booger. And check this out. You know that sudden headache you sometimes get when you eat ice cream too fast? Wait, let me try that <laughs> with some ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brain freeze, medically called sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia. <laughs> it's your brain's way of saying, slow down, I don't like sudden temperature changes. It happens because cold hits receptors in the meninges, the outer covering of the brain, causing blood vessels to quickly constrict and then dilate. So my brain is just being dramatic? Kind of. <laughs> But here's something super surprising. Your brain can't feel pain itself. It has no pain receptors. The pain you feel in your head from a headache comes from the nerves and blood vessels around your brain or the muscles in your head and neck, not the brain tissue itself. That's wild. <laughs> like being the boss of a body, <laughs> but not being able to feel your own head. Exactly. That's why scientists can sometimes perform surgery on the brain without the person feeling pain in the brain itself. So, how do we keep this amazing brain healthy? <laughs> Great question. You should always eat healthy foods like fish, blueberries, nuts, seeds, and green vegetables. But only ones you are allowed to eat to be healthy. Get plenty of exercise because it increases blood flow to your brain and can make it more willing to learn. I fly every day. <laughs> Good job. And adequate sleep is super important to maintain brain pathways and remove toxins. Oh, and always wear a helmet when riding bikes or playing sports to protect your incredible brain. Helmets for dragons too? <laughs> My head is pretty hard, but maybe I should get a sparkly one. <laughs> Definitely, Booger. Our brains are truly the most complex and fascinating organs. We've discovered so much about them. But there are still many mysteries for scientists to uncover. It's like a whole universe inside your head. So true. So take care of it, everyone. 
thanks for joining us on this Braintastic adventure, everyone. Remember to keep learning, keep exploring, and keep your incredible brains active. And stay hydrated, my little brain explorers. And don't eat your ice cream too fast. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I have to stop doing that. See you later and be greater. Atomic Booger is a production of Light Circle Entertainment, copyright 2025. Produced by Mark Rako. There's much more at AtomicBooger.com. Atomic Booger is intended for entertainment purposes only and may not be the opinion of Light Circle Entertainment or its associates. <laughs> <laughs>